Luka Doncic, he left Dallas's win in Phoenix with a sprained left ankle. The x-rays, they were negative. Luka's had an incredible season thus far, but due to his early exit, Joel Embiid actually took over first place in that scoring title race. So for more now on Luca, we bring in senior NBA insider Adrian Wojnarowski. Woj, what's the latest on Luca's ankle and the likelihood that he's going to be able to play tomorrow in Utah? Yeah, Malika, I'm told that that ankle is is a mild sprain, uh, and that uh, I think in the, in the worst case scenario, he might be out uh, the next two games, Utah tomorrow, uh, and then Monday against Detroit. Uh, they don't play again in Dallas until next Thursday against New Orleans. So if he did sit out these two games, it would give him a full week, but he's not been ruled out yet. You know Luka Doncic, he could wake up and decide, I'm going to go out and play. Certainly uh, so much of what Dallas does is built around him, but a mild sprain and the expectation is uh, he wouldn't miss uh, any more than the next two games, if even that. Okay, and you can see the Mavericks' upcoming schedule on your screen there. Dallas is off tonight. We do have five games, though, on tonight's slate. Is there one that you're looking at that is most intriguing to you? At Malika, Toronto in Golden State. This is the second game of a seven-game uh, Western trip uh, for the Raptors, and I think so much of what they might do at the trade deadline uh, maybe built around how this team comes together or doesn't on this trip. They've won two in a row. They won their first game on this trip at Sacramento, which is a tough place to win this season. But I think for Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster and their front office in Toronto, you know, they're really making some hard decisions about what kind of changes they would make with this team, including, listen, might they tear the thing completely down, start building around uh, their great second-year player, Scotty Barnes, or might they be a little more strategic uh, in making moves and try to keep going with a, a lot of this core? OG Ananobi is a player around the league. There is great interest in him, you know, really probably the most important position uh, in the league at that wing forward, you know, six, seven player, two-way player. I think there's a belief that Toronto could get as many as three first-round picks in a deal for Ananobi if they decided to move him. They've certainly talked with teams to see what the market is on him, and I think virtually everybody on that Raptors team. But uh, watch this Raptors team, how they play. They're in 12th place right now in the East. They're 22 and 27. But if they start to make a run and start to come together, if this chemistry looks better on this Western trip, it certainly could impact uh, how far Toronto might go uh, in making moves at the trade deadline and I think mm -hmm. one other player that teams keep talking about asking about uh, Boyan Bogdanovich with Detroit and, and Detroit's willingness to move him and at what price I think Detroit they signed Bogdanovich to uh, a contract through next season uh, they want to be good next year they get Kate Cunningham back uh, they get healthier they're certainly in the Victor Wembanyama sweepstakes this season they're going to get a high pick uh, but uh, teams are trying to figure out, uh, can they get Bogdanovich at the tra trade deadline uh, for a reasonable price? And mm. I think right now, Detroit has talked about two first-round picks. I think that would be difficult to get. Uh, but keep watching Bogdanovich in Detroit. There are any number of contenders uh, who would love to bring him in. Yeah, Bogdanovich could certainly help a lot of teams go over the top there at the trade deadline February 9th. Woj, thank you for stopping by on NBA Today. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.